Nina, first of all, I just want to warmly welcome you on Filmy Shilmi and a huge congratulations on the OBE. Oh, thank you very much. It's very kind. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, it's a great achievement, right? But tell me, what significance does this, um, you know, OBE have on you as a person, as an artist? What sort of significance does it hold to you? Well, um, it's something I wish I could have shared with my parents. It would have meant a lot uh, to their generation. Um, you know, i from the other Parsi colony in Mumbai. <laughs> so yeah. grew up in a little one-bed flat with like seven people squeezed into it. Um, to suddenly then end up, you know, uh, receiving an honour from the Queen in England is a bit surreal for me. Right. Um, so, but I think it is, it is a huge, um, it's a huge thing to happen, especially within the Asian community. I mean, this is, this is the year in which 14% of the, the, uh, the people who are given honours uh, are of uh, Black and Asian background, which means right. a big, you know, it, it's a big deal out here. And I'm really proud to be in that category because mm. we work very, very, very hard to achieve mm. anything. You know, we always have to work that one step harder as well, mm. um, you know, because we're off colour. So, exactly. uh, yeah, for that reason means a lot. In terms of my charity work, it means the most because... Having an OB, um, you know, behind your name, it just gives the charity a bit more gravitas, which yeah. means I can go to very rich people and ask for a lot more money, <laughs> which yes, is exactly. always good for charity. No, absolutely. So you, you're, I believe you're Parsi, right? And you've obviously grown right, up yes. in Parsi. So can you speak Gujarati as well? I do speak Gujarati. Oh. I speak terrible Parsi Gujarati. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's okay. Saru che, tamne Gujarati average, that's enough. That's, that's something I've always been wanting to ask you, actually. <laughs> you know, it's really interesting because the, they make very few, as you can imagine, films about Zoroastrians. And the one film that I'd gone up for, um, which was called Such a Long Journey, years ago, directed by Stella Gunnison. Yeah. I remember walking into the room and they were like, Oh, brilliant. You know, we've been looking for a Parsi actress. And so, you know, I auditioned for that. They come back and they go, you don't look Parsi enough. I said, I beg your pardon. <laughs> he was like, no, you're, you don't look Parsi enough. But we really like you. So can you play a go and nun in the film? Which is what I ended up playing. <laughs> It's crazy how it all works out, but that's really fascinating to hear. And, you know, Nina, I think what you just said about the whole... Um, uh, the fact that we have to work extra harder because we are people of color. I think that's yeah. something which always sticks at the back of my mind. In fact, you know, you've been a prominent figure in the British Asian sort of acting sphere. You know, everyone loves and recognizes you and acknowledges you as well. Very kind, time. thank you. So reflecting back at your mm. career, I mean, in what way would you summarize your journey thus far? Oh, it's been a rough ride. I mean, it's it's not been easy. You know, when, when people ask me, you know, to give advice to their kind of kids as to should they go into the profession? Is it OK? You know, it's you know, and I'm, I'm like, well, they need to be resilient. You have yeah. to have very thick skin in this profession. Um, but uh, it, it, it was very tough. My first seven years were purely theatre, which is my my actual love. You know, I did seven years of worth of that. And then all of a sudden, at the end of my, my seventh year, in which I was at a, a theatre here called Theatre Royal Stratford East, uh -huh. uh, co-written a show with a bunch of friends called Do You Eat With Your Fingers? Right. And the reason this show came out is I'd gone to an Indian restaurant with a bunch of white friends. I was the only Indian and the waiter gave everyone cutlery except me. Mm. And I remember thinking, sorry, why are you know, why, why am I giving cutlery? He goes, you, you're Indian. He said, you eat with your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's where do you with your fingers came from and right. then I got seen by the producers of uh, goodness gracious me and then they were like we need a woman on the show you know we need another woman do you want to come and mm -hmm. join and that's mm -hmm. how goodness gracious me happened that was my first proper tv job so I was yeah. learning yeah. on the job as I did that show yeah um and then literally you just graft you just have to reinvent yourself you have to come up with new characters and and then all of a sudden, after I had my first child, I got offered a soap called EastEnders. Yeah. Um, and in that soap, they said, oh, can you create this kind of, um, she's, a, she's a Muslim woman who, you know, is quite feisty, but she's also funny. They wanted to bring humor into the soap. So uh, I created this woman called Zainab Masood. Um, and mm -hmm. she, I went in for six months in this show and I stayed yeah. for six and a half years. 
It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember oh god I mean we'll be talking about Zainab don't you worry I mean that is you know <laughs> jab hum aap se baat kare aur Zainab ka zikr na ho waisa to ho hi nahi sakta hai so obviously we'll, we'll definitely be touching on that but I think also what I find it mesmerizing about you um as um I was going to call you Zainab Nina is the fact that <laughs> It's the fact that you know you kind of were born in India, and then I believe you moved to Hong Kong, and now obviously you're settled in England. So having grown up in various parts of the world, in different countries and different cultures, how did that influence or inspire the sort of work you chose to pursue? Oh, that's a really interesting question. Um, well, I mean, I think having lived uh, in a sort of different places, the one thing I noticed is the commonality, the the kind of um, familial commonality you know where a mother is a mother no matter where she is in the world you know yeah. a sister is a sister no matter where she is and i wanted to bring that to the work that i do um i want to also bring the kind of human failings that make us all kind of quite desperate sort of funny people you know we all want the same things okay at the end of the day we all want love we all want friendship we all want kindness we all want goodness and it there's every character that i play i make sure it's got you know elements of lots and lots of different things even if i'm playing a bad guy i will make sure that there is either some humor or something else in there because yeah. that's the reality of things you know even if you meet someone in in your lifetime that you don't particularly like they're not all bad there's still redeeming qualities about them Hmm. and that's what i want to portray in the characters that get sent my way but i love that question can i just tell you i've never been asked that and that's really? so cool oh wow yeah. i i'm really I glad that. actually because i've seen cuz actually when i was preparing for this interview i did watch a few interviews of yours and i was like yeah i would be really fascinated to know about how you know one soaks in the world around them and how they portray that on screen it, it really does fascinate me because i think like you like like you mentioned i think you're right though because at the end of the day we are all flawed characters right and yeah beyond the barriers of cultures and all of that we're still humans and we still make mistakes i mean some people make it bigger than others but hey that's what makes yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> um but having played um an iconic role like zena um in a legendary show like eastenders which has been going on more longer than my existence in this world yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> thanks now i feel really oh old. god <laughs> Don't worry. I mean it's you're still you're still as <laughs> fresh as a daisy so you can sit <laughs> on on that set. But you know how difficult is it actually for an actor to um shrug off that image when doing other projects? Like did you ever feel this whole uh struggle of being bogged down by playing Zainab uh, of any sort? Um yeah, I did. Uh when when I left the show and it was a conscious decision to leave the show because I'm I'm just not one of those actors that can do one role and then I'm done for the rest of my life even though it's it's a much easier life in a soap can I tell you because you know you've got steady income coming in you know what your schedule is way in advance you know you can organize your life in all kinds of ways especially with children you know it's it's yeah. handy the problem is I was getting bored of her and in fact i was turning into her a little bit you know when you play someone for that long yes. like my my husband literally at one point said listen it's her or me make up your mind you know it's just <laughs> like uh because you you kind of absorb a character when you've been but that character for so long um and then when i left the show everyone had warned me they said look when you leave a soap be careful because you don't work again immediately you know because uh, especially if the character is recognizable and people like it they mm. a casting directors wouldn't touch me for a whole yeah. year casting directors would say to my agent you know what well, nah it's just it's zena we can't we can't do that oh, wow. so i had to wait like literally i have waited now just over 10 years to be seen as something different and allowed to be in a different show so currently i'm working with steven merchant and um christopher mm. walken of all people on the offenders in bristol mm. it's his steven's new comedy and i don't think i would have got a job like that if you know it had been close to when i left these standards Yeah, do you know what I actually what I've also realized is that a lot of British Asian actors feel like they've kind of made it when they've kind of gone on to EastEnders and like big soaps like that or Emmerdale or Coronation Street, but yeah. people don't actually realize that soaps are not the only big deal. Like there's so many other big achievements along the way. Why do you think that is? I mean, do you think that whole approach can change as well that whole percep- perception, so to speak? 
I think it can. I mean, look, I went into EastEnders as an older actor. I'd already been in the profession, you know, over 20 years at that point. So I had a perspective. I, I knew that Enders is great. And it, it gave a great boost to my career. And I loved my time on it. I worked with some of my favorite actors ever. But there comes a point where you have to go, you know, that, that was great fun. But now what's the next part of my career? Yeah. Where do I go from here? And I've always been someone who's wanted to try everything. I mean, last year, you know, even sort of with lockdown, we struggled on. And I went into a genre I've never done before, which is sort of comedy horror. Oh, so that's wow. coming out this year. You know, I did three independent films, all in the comedy, thriller, horror genre, which, again, I've never done before. And that's what I find interesting about, you know, being an actor. You get mm -hmm. to be a character. I mean, for me, it's definitely I'm a character actor and I like to create different, really fun, crazy people. And um, so that's the exciting part for me. I think yes. people who get comfortable in soaps, some actors love that. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that, you know, if, if that's what you want to do. I'm just not one of them. You know, absolutely. Yes, very well said. But I think when anyone who is South Asian uh, and chooses to become an actor, you know, they, their instinctive thought is to go into Hindi cinema and Bollywood, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, Bollywood made up Jario. That's always the sort of like, <laughs> like sort of thought that sort of gets uh, put towards them. But I know you've kind of mentioned in interviews that you've always been drawn towards like Shakespeare and theatre, yeah. more that side of acting rather than the sort of glamorous and... I mean, not to say yeah. that Bollywood is just glamorous, there's also other sort of subparts, but um, were you ever not tempted to return to India and pursue like a full-fledged acting career in the Bollywood industry there? No, <laughs> is the <laughs> honest truth. And, and there's a reason for it. It's, yeah. Look, I have huge respect for, for people who do Bollywood and do it really well. I mean, there it is a, a, an incredible industry. I mean, it's, it's India's biggest industry, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. And... Um, and uh, people are passionate about that. That's that's fantastic. I my love has always been theatre. My love has always been the classics. You know, I just there's something about those characters that I I love. Um, and uh, initially, I'll be honest. I think there was more scope for women anyway within the classics as opposed to within Bollywood. You know, with the Bollywood films that I grew up with, with the Sholes and you know Dharmveer mm. and all of that stuff. You know, for me the women were always sort of slightly superfluous to what, what the men had to do. I mean, no. don't, don't get me wrong. You know, this, this year about three or four Bollywood films came my way. Um, and uh, unfortunately the pandemic happened and unfortunately I was doing other work. But, and so I know that Bollywood, you know, th there is a niche for me there, but I want to find the right project in Bollywood for, for myself. I think, I think that I would love to do a project where, you know, it's female led, and it's, mm -hmm. it's strong women and it's to show what we can really do. That's what I'm waiting for. Um, and, mm -hmm. and then I'd love to be a part of that scene. But, and I don't, don't get me wrong, I love my experience on Namaste London. I mean, working with Akshay, working with, you know, Rishi Kapoor, who was, it was such a surreal thing for me because my parents um, love the Kapoor family and in particular Rishi. <laughs> and my dad knew him actually. My dad used to be with the airlines and Rishi and him, when my dad came out while I was filming, we were in oh. Udaipur somewhere. Okay. My dad came out and Rishi was so lovely to my father and just, you know, they, they, he, tr they treated each other with the greatest respect. And that meant a lot to me. Um, and, and working with Rishi, we laughed so much, honestly, it was such a, I, I found him hilarious. I just, I just found he yeah. had such warmth and, and Akshay was so wonderful. And, you know, playing cricket with him while we were resting off set was great fun. And he, he's a big goodness gracious me fan, Akshay, you know, that really? was so... Yeah, that was just kind of cool that he knew my work. And I was like, you know my work? Geez, you're a megastar out here. It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. So we got on like a house on fire. And it was just, mm -hmm. that experience was lovely. Um, you know, and Vipul's a fantastic director. You know, he, yeah. he, he, you know, that, that, because I was nervous. That was my first ever Bollywood film. I've yes. been approached before, but I always said no. But then the opportunity to play Rishi's wife, I was like, I'm not turning that down. That's kind of cool. So, yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a great experience, but I would like to come back to Bollywood, but I want to do it in a female-led way. Right. So it'll be right to summarize that obviously since Namaste London, you've had offers, but things haven't been quite um, 
you know, what you were wanting or what expecting for in Bollywood. Why was that actually, if I can ask? Is it something, is it because like, you're not giving enough like prominence in the film or what do you no, think? It, it, no, 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 don't get me wrong. I will never say no to a small part. I'm not that, I mean, in fact, that's what's kept my career going is I will never say no right. to the size of the role. It's just the roles themselves are just not interesting enough. They're, they're just, um, I, I mean, you know, there, there'll be films like I did Aladdin. I had the smallest role in, yes. in you know, <laughs> Aladdin uh, a, a couple of years ago. But And it's not, like I said, not the size of the role. She was just an interesting character to play. I right. want to play women that, you know, will somehow make a difference. That's where I'm at in my life. You know, I think you sure. get to a certain point in your career where you can be a bit picky and a bit choosy and say, actually, I don't want to do this role because she's not really saying anything of worth. So right. give me... Give me something that that I can, you know, play with and use and and make interesting enough that people go, oh, oh gosh, you know, like I, I want that kind of, you know, the way Nargis, you know, had you know done Mother India. I want that kind of thing where you know it makes a difference, you know. Right? That, like, that's I think what I'm looking for. You're in the right time, actually. You're in the right time at the right place, actually, for Bollywood because at the moment that whole uh, sense of women empowerment has become a very central theme now I think in in Bollywood and it's sort of formed a major part of the landscape of the cinema that it is and I think you're actually in the right time because we've seen a lot of stories in fact last year itself in OTT we had so many uh, great films and shows like we had uh, Deepika's Chapak which came out which was a uh, about her playing an acid attack survivor then those Thappar with wow. Tapsi which she played um, sort yeah. of domestic abuse survivor as well so it's quite yeah. you're in the right time I'm really hopeful actually that you will get good scripts coming your way I am hopeful yeah. So, fingers crossed that would be amazing thank you <laughs> yeah definitely but obviously I think it's taken a while for Indians to sort of get a prominent representation in mainstream entertainment even now I still feel that fight you know we're still sort of yeah. struggling to sort of get there in many many ways but how satisfied are you with the journey so far in terms of the representation that we've had I mean how what do you think can be done to improve it um, well, you know, I, I think we need to have a lot of strings to our bow. So um, by that, I mean, you know, if you want to be an actor, be an actor and a writer, be an actor and a singer and a dancer and something else, because they're, they're, just being an actor isn't enough in the world that we're in now, especially if you've been in the business as long as I have, which is why you have to constantly be creating, constantly be thinking about what's my next project, what's the next thing that I need to do. So um, I do feel that although it's improved in the UK, I don't think it's improved enough. And that's been our fight no. from day one. You know, we mm. want representation, but we want it in our way. Yes. I don't just want to, you know, be the, you know, the Indian sort of, I don't know, psychiatrist or doctor or council <laughs> worker, you know, again, anymore. And if I do play that, which I do sometimes still, I make sure that there's a bit more depth to her, you know? Right. So I think the representation will change when we take control ourselves and write those things up for ourselves now. You know, yeah. um, I'm old enough and ugly enough to do it. So it's fine. <laughs> well, you're definitely none of those. So please never say that again, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think yes, I think it's about time as well because I remember even in EastEnders they have the Indian restaurant called Aji Baji. I mean, I, I've never heard. I mean, many kabi naam suna nahi Aji Baji. It's a proper. It's a British phrase which means you know let's pick a fight. <laughs> if you get into an Aji Baji, you get into a bit of a fight. It's it's all Cockney rhyming slang, you know. It's all that kind of vein of things and. It's not, it's not meant in an insulting way. It, that is just the East End and it's, you know, it's an endearment. So it's not a, not a negative. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm from East, East, I'm, I'm from East London as well. And I've never heard ah, of it. Excellent. Before. Really? Maybe it, oh, not, no. maybe it was before my time. So I don't know. No, 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 no. It's because you're from the, the real East End. <laughs> <That's laughs> ah, that's what it is. You know, <laughs> that East End is for all TV East Enders. It's fine. <laughs> Definitely. But I think also, um, you know, since obviously we were talking about representation and stuff and nowadays, as you know, um, OTT and digital platforms like Netflix and Amazon have sort of, um, you know, become on the rise. You know, they've become the lifeline for us in many, many ways as well. Um, how much of a middle ground do you think these will sort of be in providing more opportunities towards um, uh, sort of standalone talents, so to speak, not just for us, but I think for any talent? Uh, whatsoever oh I think it's fantastic I mean I think Netflix is the best thing that happened to this industry I really yep. do yep. I think it's given such a boost and it's it's um 
uh, I think they do, they're a bit more open-minded, uh, you know, Netflix about the kind of shows that they want to do. I know they have a fantastic India section. Actually, I could ask you this. Yeah. I um, went to school in Hong Kong with a lovely girl called Neelam. And I'm yes. pretty sure that's her in a Netflix series Fabulous about Hollywood wife. Yeah. Oh my God, please, can you say hello to her for me and ask her to get in touch because she was just the loveliest girl at school. I oh, mean, she was oh. the most, honestly, she was so beautiful and so kind and so lovely. And then I lost touch with her and I'm so gutted because I just think she's she's amazing. I think she should be given a lot more opportunity. So, um, and then I saw her and I went, I'm sure that's my Neelam, I'm sure it is. So <laughs> please say hello to her for me. <laughs> wow, this is, this is, a, what a pleasant surprise. I never thought that you two would have gone, Neelam Kothari would, you and yeah, Neelam she Kothari went, she went to school in Hong Kong, in my, it was, she was at school with me. And I was like, and we got to be friends and it was so lovely. And then all of a sudden she had to leave. And I think she just went back to India and we never really got to say bye. And then of course I came to the UK, so we lost touch. But then I was clicking yeah. through these channels and I was like, I know that voice. I know that face. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I wonder if it's the same Neelam who went to school. And it's like, yes, that's Neelam. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. <laughs> and guess what? She's got a Gujarati connection as well. So no. how fun is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's... Oh, that's think, brilliant. So that's really awesome. Oh, I, my dad will say up with her. Oh, then I'll love it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll tell her, let's do a Gujarati Parsi little combo. Let's do it. You should. Oh my God, that would be so cool. I think you should do like a lockdown series or something where both let's of you do are it. together. Oh my God, this let's is, this is awesome. So in case if people, in case that actually transpires, you all heard it here first. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> but I think on a final note, um, Nina, you know, is there anything that you have uh, on your bucket list now as an actor? Because like you said, you know, you're exploring so many different styles now. Like you mentioned, you were doing horror comedy. Um, so is yeah. there anything that you would think that would challenge you now more as an actor? Um, do you know, I, I would love to do a, a proper big kind of drama of some kind, you know, like, like, like a version of The Crown or something like that wow. or Succession, which I, I'm obsessed with. Mm. Um, I, I would love to get a series like that. I think that that would make my year now at this point. Um, uh, either that or, a, you know, I mean, I, there is something coming up. Um, it is a, a Netflix series um, and it is a massive Netflix series that's oh coming God. out. So, but I unfortunately can't say the name of the project because I've signed okay. an NDA. So I cannot yeah. say what it is, yeah. um, but I can tell you that I am part of it and it's coming out hopefully uh, either at the end of this year or early next year. Oh wow! Is uh, it British Asian or is it like? No, a... no, no, no. It's it's proper big um, American production, so it, that's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, wow, you, you, Nina, you've just dropped a bombshell on us. <laughs> <laughs> it's like towards the end of the interview, she's like, "Boom, mic drop." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very kind. No, but I that was such an exciting time because it was like I had to audition on tape. Which, by the way, can I just say I hate doing. I so like the last two years of my life have been horrible with these self tapes I'm just someone who likes to walk into a room and then I'll I'll kind of you know audition opposite someone but right. to sit in your own little space and then have a little camera and then read with your husband who I yell and scream at a lot because I'm like don't read it like that read it like this and poor guy he's not an actor he's a composer right. so he's like what um so anyway uh I it just I had a back and forth with the showrunner um who is huge and and I remember kind of being so nervous um, and I tend to do one of two things when I'm nervous. I either talk absolute rubbish for about 10 minutes straight without <laughs> breathing or I go really quiet and I just stare into the camera while other people talk at me and I say yes to everything <laughs> because I'm nervous. So people say, oh, so do you enjoy sci-fi? And I'd go, yes, I hate sci-fi. And I'd be like, right. it's brilliant. Um, but <laughs> so it's just nerves. But when I got a yes from him, I was absolutely in heaven because it's not the kind of part that comes my way. So uh, sure. I'm very excited because I start filming that in a couple of weeks here, you know, mm. lockdown permitting. So Yeah, no, fingers crossed for that. And uh, wow, I think it just gets exciting and exciting, doesn't it, Nina? You've got your OBE and now you've got this massive Netflix series. And oh, my God, you know, Neelam Kotari as well, which was <laughs> definitely. Oh, please, honestly, if you know us, say hi. I'm desperate to get in touch with her. So we must do that. I'd be yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. We can definitely make that happen. I'm sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> but I think on that note, Donina, I just wanted to say 
Thank you so much. I think it's been a long wish of mine to actually interview you. And it's been Aww. some time where I've always wanting to kind of uh, been wanting to have a conversation with you about your life and the way you've um, been amazing and been a real trailblazer for us. So thank you once again for joining me and congratulations once again as well. No worries. And you're a fantastic interviewer, can I just say? Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. That <laughs> means so much to me. Thank you so much. It, the support, the love, it, that's exactly what I work for. And that means the world to me. So thank you anyway. And uh, I can't wait to check out your big Netflix series whenever it comes out. Uh, sometime <laughs> at the end of this year or whenever it comes out. Sure. All right. All the best. All right. Thank you. Bye, Nina.